You want to know the truth? I like living here. Now, it's not the Waldorf, but Jenny and I do all right. They tell me that public housing in some cities is pretty bad. But around here, we are organized. We have a volunteer tenant patrol in the lobby of every building. And we have a tough tenant organization that is not afraid to challenge anybody, including the central office of the housing authority itself. And we got Harry. Yes, Harry. Come on, let me show you my house. You know what makes me really mad? It's this idea that public housing is some kind of a free ride, some kind of charity. Look, I pay for all this, and I pay a lot. My rent, practically everybody's rent, is 30% of our income. Most people outside of public housing don't pay that much. Check it out. If you're going to come to work for the housing authority, I ask for only one thing, respect. Treat me and my neighbors with respect, and we'll do the same. Let me give you an example. I need a new faucet. The maintenance worker was decent enough to let me know this morning that he had to wait for a part. I mean, that is thoughtful. That's respect. Come over, let me show you something. You see that ramp over there? If you want to see something about a public housing project that will knock your eyes out, take a look down that ramp. heat and hot water for 1,444 apartments. And this monster boils 1 million gallons of water a year, burns 1 million gallons of oil, almost 3 million BTUs a week, and is as temperamental as a billy goat. Let's get out of here. We depend on each other. This is my boss, the superintendent of this project. And I, in turn, report to this guy. I'm responsible for the physical maintenance of 47 projects in my district, one of eight management districts throughout the city. Truth is, I'm only as good as he makes me look. And I look good when she does her job. In other words, it takes all of us to look out for 10,000 windows that might break or 90 miles of steam and water lines that might pop, or 32 elevators in this project alone that can shut down without warning. A few people realize what it takes to keep one of these projects running smoothly. Just take a look around. Everything's got to move and move fast. And I love it. After a while, you begin to treat some of this hardware like a good friend. It stands between you and a cold project. There's a lot at stake even people's lives, people who are dependent on pulmonary or dialysis machines. I'll tell you something. When the lights went out in New York City in the blackout of 1977, the public housing projects were one of the few residential communities to stay calm and organized. No one panicked. I like to think that we, that all of us, had something to do with that. Thanks for listening. Have a nice day. I'm glad you could come in today, Mr. Dixon. I'm sure we can straighten this out. When you signed your lease, you made an agreement that you and your wife would be the only occupants of apartment 4D. You think I don't care? You think I, I don't worry about this all day and all night? I haven't had a decent night's sleep. And my wife, she's terrified you're going to put us out. That's why we're talking. Nobody's going to put anybody out. We have a problem, and we're going to solve it. They just showed up one day, knocked at the door. They were hungry and scared. What could I do? 
two scared kids looking for their grandparents. What happened to their mother? She's an addict. I don't even know where she is. God, it's so sad for those kids. We have a problem here. Now, we have an unbreakable law of privacy at the Housing Authority. A tenant's private business with us is nobody else's business. This story, of course, is an example, but it makes an important point. Right away, you should know that this Housing Authority faces the same tangled problems that the whole city faces. I'm a housing assistant. It's my job to untangle the problems that my tenants bring to me. Mr. Dixon lives with his wife in a one-bedroom apartment in an all-elderly building. He suddenly has his two grandchildren living with him, and the kids are scaring the whole building with their big radios and coming and goings at all hours. But believe it or not, there may be a solution. Think about this, Mr. Dixon. We have a policy that allows us to transfer this kind of family an elderly couple with their grandchildren, into a larger apartment in a family building. It's like going backwards for us. But maybe we have no choice. It's not a perfect solution. It's a compromise. But that's what we do all day long. We try to make an imperfect world work a little better. Enjoy your tour. I'll see you later. <laughs>